A very good evening and a warm welcome to the CNBC Africa State of the Nation special. We'll be, we will be bringing you live coverage of the speech as well as some analysis. I'm Nozi Pombanjo. With me in studio is Robelane Dagada. He's a development economist at Wits Business School. We will be joined a little bit later by Richard Downing. He's an economist uh, for, he's with Ekandao and Saki and he's in Economic Services. And we'll also be joined by Azar Jamin. He's a chief economist and director at Econometrics. For now, though, Rabelani, let's talk about some of your expectations out of the speech. What are you wanting to hear out of this state of the nation? Uh, I've got no doubt that uh, the president will address the issues related to infrastructure. Mm. And uh, in my view, we really need that to create an oomph into the economy. The economy is a little bit asleep. Mm. It needs some motivation. But um, I'm also very curious whether around infrastructure, yeah. whether the president will address the issue of um, nuclear power plants. Mm. Because we know that there have been such discussions behind the scenes in the government, whether we need that so that we can increase our um, um, energy capacity. Do you think this is going to be around a broader conversation about uh, reassuring investors about the certainty of our economic infrastructure? In particular, you raised the question now of ESCOM. I've got no doubt that um, uh, the president will do that, especially after those um, negative ratings. Um, he's going to definitely is going to address that, mm. and and I think he'll also address the issue regarding our labour relations with all these strikes. Uh, how does that um, affect the investment? How does that affect the affect the economy? Mm. So he'll talk around uh, th that. You issue. raise a number of of, uh, of of items in that list of what you you're looking to expect, but let's maybe zoom into the labour relations issue. Mm. I mean, everybody is waiting for that announcement whether mm. an agreement has been reached, whether it be tonight or tomorrow morning mm. but what else can the president talk about around labor surely it must be a broader conversation that extends beyond what we're seeing in the platinum belt yes I, I fully agree you will think that uh, the president will address the issue of uh, legislation mm. labor legislation because uh, there's a view out there internationally yeah. That how our yeah. labor laws are very let me let me stop you there Rabelani. the president has just taken to the podium we're now going to cross over live to Parliament in Cape Town Thank you. <laughs> the Speaker of the National Assembly, Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP, Deputy President of the Republic, Honorable Sir Ramaphosa, former Deputy President Halema Mutlante, Honorable Chief Justice of the Republic and all esteemed members of the judiciary. Honorable ministers and deputy ministers, premiers and speakers of provincial legislatures, chairperson of the NCOP, chairperson of SALGA, and all local government leadership. Chairperson of the National House of Traditional Leaders, the heads of Chapter 9 institutions, leaders from all sectors, members of the Diplomatic Corps, honorable members, distinguished guests, fellow South Africans. Good evening, Sunny Bonani. Molueni, <clears throat> Riperil, Dumelang, Dimatekwa. Honorable members, where not? Where not? <laughs> 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 
honorary members of the House, it is a great pleasure to address you on this first state of the nation address of the fifth democratic administration. Let me begin by extending our deepest condolences on the sad passing of the Secretary of Parliament, Mr. Michael Kutsie. His contribution to the struggle for liberation and freedom and democracy will never be forgotten. Honorable members, last week we also lost our mother, Mama Pinet Mbegi. Her guidance and wisdom will be sorely missed. We extend our heartfelt condolences to the Mbegi family. Our hearts go out to the families of SA and DF members who died in a tragic helicopter crash in Pumalanga today during a training camp. We wish the injured a speedy recovery. Compatriots, we have recently emerged from a successful national general election held on the 7th of May. We look forward to working with all the parties in parliament as we move South Africa forward. In the February State of the Nation Address, I related the good story of 20 years of freedom and democracy. We stated that South Africa is a much better place to live in than it was in 1994. And that is the lives of millions of our people have improved. However, as a national development plan and the presidency's 20-year review highlight, the triple challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment continues to affect the lives of many people. As we enter the second phase of our transition from apartheid to a national democratic society, we have to embark on a radical socioeconomic transformation to push back the triple challenges. Change will not come about without some far-reaching interventions. We have put in place a program of action based on the ANC's manifesto and the National Development Plan. The economy takes center stage. in this program. It remains our strong belief that the most effective weapon in the campaign against poverty is the creation of decent work, and that creating work requires faster economic growth. We have set a strong target of 5% by 2019. To achieve this, 
we will embark on various measures and interventions to jumpstart the economy. We have set this target during a difficult period. The economy has grown below its potential over the last three years. And many households are going through difficulties. The slow growth has been caused in part by the global economic slowdown and secondly, by domestic conditions such as the prolonged and at times violent strikes and also the shortage of energy. Given the impact of the unattainable labor relations environment on our economy, it is critical for social partners to meet and deliberate on the violent nature of our strikes and duration. The social partners will also need to deliberate on wage inequality. On our side as government, we will during this term investigate the possibility of a national minimum wage as one of the key mechanisms to reduce the income inequalities. <clears throat> Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa will convene a social partners dialogue within the ambit of NEDLEC. Secondly, government will play its part in the implementation of the landmark framework agreement for a sustainable mining industry entered into by labor, business, and government last year under the leadership of former Deputy President Khalima Mutlante. The process will now be led by the President. We will implement the undertaking to build housing and other services to revitalize mining towns as part of the October 2012 agreement between business, government, and labor. The focus is the mining areas of Motosana, Emalasheni, Sekukuni, Lepalale, West Rand, and Macha Bay. An inter-ministerial committee on the revitalization of distressed mining communities has been established under the leadership of the minister in the presidency, responsible for planning, performance, monitoring, and evaluation, Mr. Jeff Hadek. The members of the committee include the ministers of mineral resources, water and sanitation, trade and industry, social development, labor, human settlements, health, economic development, and finance. To further promote improved living conditions for mine workers, 
government is monitoring the compliance of mining companies with mining charter targets relating to improving the living conditions of workers. <clears throat> Companies are expected to convert or upgrade hostels into family units, attain the occupancy rate of one person per room, and also facilitate home ownership options for mine workers. <clears throat> we urge companies to meet the 2014 deadline for these targets and extend this right to dignity to mine workers. <clears throat> Honorable members, distinguished guests, the low level of investments is a key constraint to economic growth. We are determined to work with the private sector to remove obstacles to investment. We would like to see the private sector showing as much confidence in the economy as the public sector. We will continue to engage business in promoting inclusive growth and to build a more prosperous society. In this regard, I will soon convene a meeting of the Presidential Business Working Group. After the last meeting of the Working Group last year, six work streams were established and these have been discussing solutions to various obstacles to doing business in South Africa. These issues were also raised by owners and CEOs of major companies that I hosted in three separate intensive working sessions at the Mashambanjo of Residence in November and December last year. The next meeting of the working group will take forward the Partnership for Inclusive Growth and Sustainable Development. Fellow South Africans, we need to respond decisively to the country's energy constraints in order to create a conducive environment for growth. A successful electrification program which has changed the lives of many households was achieved by tapping into artificial electricity reserves, which had not been designed to cater for mass energy distribution. This situation calls for a radical transformation of the energy sector to develop a sustainable energy mix that comprises cold, solar, wind, hydro, gas, and nuclear energy. The transformation will require structural changes in the manner in which government departments, affected state-owned companies, and the industry as a whole address the energy challenges. The energy plan also calls for 
the injection of capital and human resources into the energy sector. We will also need to identify innovative approaches to fast track procurement and delivery by government in the energy sector to prepare the institutional capacity we are in the process of converting the National Nuclear and Energy Executive Coordinating Committee of Cabinet into the Energy Security Cabinet Subcommittee. The subcommittee will be responsible for the oversight, coordination, and direction of activities for the energy sector. The subcommittee will also ensure that ESCOM receives the support it requires to fulfill its mandate and that it remains focused on achieving its goals and targets. To achieve our energy security goals, state-owned enterprises involved in the energy sector, such as ESCOM, South African Nuclear Energy Corporation, and the Central Energy Fund, will have to adapt to the redefined roles to achieve these objectives. Work needs to be done at a technical level on all forms of energy, especially nuclear energy and shell gas with regards to funding, safety, exploitation, and local manufacture of components. Nuclear has the possibility of generating well over 9,000 megawatts, while shell gas is recognized as a game changer for our economy. We will pursue the shell gas option within the framework of our good environmental laws. There are, also, there are also some urgent activities that we are engaging in the short term. Progress at Mudubi power station construction site will be accelerated. Plans of the financing of the next large coal fire power station, coal three, will be speeded up so that the procurement process can commence. We will also continue the fourth window of the renewable energy independent power product producers program to take advantage of wind, solar, biomass, and other technologies that increase the opportunity for rural development. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Chairperson of the NCOP, we are also looking beyond our borders for energy security. In October last year, we signed the Grand Inga Hydropower Project, a treaty with the government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This massive and strategic project has the potential to generate 40,000 megawatts 
of hydroelectricity. Our country will benefit enormously from this milestone project. to prepare for the implementation of the energy plan, we need to finalize the legislation that relates to the restructuring of the energy industry as envisaged by the Independent System Market Operator Bill, the Integrated Resource Plan, and other policies affecting the energy sector. Honorable members, distinguished guests, we are a nation at work. <clears throat> In addition to our major energy security interventions, we will continue to implement the successful National Infrastructure Plan under the supervision of the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Commission throughout the country. During the past five years, we invested about one trillion rand in new infrastructure to provide water, energy, transport, sanitation, schools and clinics, and internet connections to our people. <clears throat> Over the next three years, we will spend 847 billion rand on the infrastructure and several projects are to be started or completed. The construction of Mzimvu Dam in the Eastern Cape will continue, and also the raising of the wall of Clan William Dam in the Western Cape. During the next five years, the bulk of the construction work on phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project will be completed. In the next five years, we will finish building more than 60 meerkat dishes and start building the first 100 square kilometer array dish antennas. <clears throat> we'll expand, modernize, and increase the affordability of information and communications infrastructure and electronic communication services, including broadband and digital broadcasting. <clears throat> Cabinet adopted South Africa Connect, our broadband policy and strategy in December last year to take this mission forward. We'll continue with various other infrastructure projects that will change the living conditions of our people and boost economic growth. Compatriots, our radical social economic transformation program will be taken further with the implementation of the Industrial Policy Action Plan. We'll promote 
local procurement and increase domestic production by having the state buy 25% of goods and services from South African producers. We will utilize the renewable energy sector, the manufacturing of buses, transports, 50 billion rand locomotive contracts, and PRASA, and PRASA's passenger rail projects, among others, to promote local content and boost growth. We will also, over the next five years, promote regional economic development and industrialization through the creation of special economic zones around the country. We'll continue to support through incentives, the competitiveness of the auto auto, clothing, leather, footwear, and textile industries, which are labor intensive. Honorable members, despite tough global trading conditions in its traditional markets, South Africa's tourism sector continue to grow continue to show positive growth in 2013, reaching a record high of 9.6 million international tourist arrivals. People love our country and continue to visit South Africa. We have set a target to increase the number of foreign visitor arrivals to more than 15 million annually by 2017. We are also looking at the increasing the contribution of tourism to the country's revenue to more than 125 billion rand by 2017. Over the next five years, we will prioritize support to small business as well as township and informal sector businesses. In particular, thus using the SMME development program to boost broad-based black economic empowerment. We will sharpen the implementation of the amended Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment Act and the Employment Equity Act in order to transform the ownership, management, and control of the economy. We'll promote more employee and community share ownership schemes and boost the participation of black entrepreneurs in the reindustrialization of the economy. <clears throat> Compatriots, the total assets of our development finance institutions amount to some 230 billion rand. However, their impact on development is not sufficiently broad-based, and their investment programs are not well coordinated. The institutions will be 
repositioned in the next five years to become real engines of socioeconomic development. In the same vein, Post Bank will be supported so that it can play a leading role in the expansion of banking services to the poor and the working class. Honorable members, distinguished guests, youth employment will be prioritized in our economic transformation program. Government will introduce further measures to speed up the employment of young people consistent with the Youth Employment Accord. We will expand the number of internship positions in the public sector with every government, department, and public entity being required to take, to take on interns for, exper for experience and training. The private sector has responded positively to the introduction of the employment tax incentives. In only five months, there are 133,000 employees who have benefited and 11,000 employers who have participated in the incentive scheme. The majority has been employed in wholesale and retail trade, manufacturing, and finance sectors. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Chairperson, government has since 2004 ran the successful expanded public works program, which provides work opportunities and training for the unemployed. The new phase will provide 6 million work opportunities by 2019. We are building on the success of the past five years. We created around four million work opportunities in the past five years. The expanded work, the expanded public works program, environmental initiatives such as working on waste, working on Weightland, working for water, working on fire, and the environmental youth services program will also be upscaled up to 2019 in support of youth development. In addition, the local government-based community work program will be expanded to provide a million work opportunities by the end of 2019. Compatriots, we have identified agriculture as a key job driver. Our target is for the agricultural sector to create a million jobs by 2030.
government will provide comprehensive support to smallholder farmers by spending up, <clears throat> by speeding up land reform and providing technical, infrastructural, and financial support. <clears throat> support will be provided to communities as well as well to engage in food production and subsistence farming to promote food security in line with the first Atlala food production program. We will accelerate the settlement of remaining land claims submitted before the cutoff date of 1998. We will also reopen the period for the lodgement of claims for the restitution of land for a period, for a period of five years and codify the exceptions to the 1913 cutoff date for the descendants of the Khoi and Sun. <clears throat> Honorable Speaker, Honorable Chairperson, Sub-Saharan Africa is increasingly becoming a more important trade partner for our country. We are encouraged that South African investments in the continent increased from 5.5 billion rand in, 20, in 2002 to 32.3 billion rand in 2013. Our exports into the continent are also increasing each year, having been at 28.5%, up from 22.6% in 2002. <clears throat> South Africa will continue to champion broader regional integration through the Southern African Customs Union SADAC and the envisaged tripartite free trade area that blends Eastern and Southern Africa. Fellow South Africans, we would like our people, our people's experience of local government to be a pleasant one. We have listed, we have listened to the complaints and proposals of South Africans over the past five years relating to the performance of municipalities. I would like to share with you now our plan of action to revitalize local government. Our municipalities are built on a firm foundation built over the last 20 years of democracy. We have evaluated all our municipalities. We have inspected their financial management, how they work within legislative processes, as well as their ability to roll out projects and to address capacity constraints. We have also looked at how they respond to service delivery protests. 
there have been many successes in many municipalities. However, we face a number of challenges in others. We are pleased that 11 municipalities stand out for consistent good performance in audits, expenditure on municipal infrastructure grants and service delivery. The 11 municipalities are the following. Kangala District. <laughs> Municipality. Taitatu District Municipality. Zululand District Municipality. <clears throat> Mzinyati District Municipality. Ilembe District Municipality. Naisna Local Municipality. The West Coast District Municipality. Mazikama Local Municipality. Mosel Bay Local Municipality. Breed Valley Local Municipality. And Steve Chwete Local Municipality. We congratulate municipalities for this performance. A comprehensive assessment of various municipalities has indicated where they need support. We will provide assistance to the following municipalities, among others. In Matoleni District Municipality in the Eastern Cape, our Development Bank of Southern Africa has approved funding to develop infrastructure. <clears throat> 100 numerous projects, mainly in water and sanitation, will be started. And the objective is to complete them over the next 12 months. Umzinyati District Municipality, KwaZulu Natal, funding will be provided to develop infrastructure projects covering mainly the electrification of households. <clears throat> Local municipalities to be serviced include Msinga, Umvoti, and Ngutu. In Alfred Nzor District Municipality in the Eastern Cape, funding will be provided for infrastructure development projects covering water provision, sanitation, and electrification. <clears throat> Local municipalities involved in, include Bizana, and in Tabankulu, catering for a population of about one million people. We will support Lukaji Local Municipality to reorganize its administration and implement support plans for the provision of water and electricity. <clears throat> we 
will assist OR Tambo District Municipality to stabilize the administration and organizational structure and fast track the implementation of the presidential intervention plan. in Mbashe, local municipality, we will implement waste management plans and address groundwater contamination issues. <clears throat> At Ngaka, Modiri, Molewa District Municipality <laughs> in the Northwest National Government will provide support and work with the Development Bank of Southern Africa to resolve financing for water and sanitation infrastructure. <laughs> we will support the city of Johannesburg in Gaudi to resolve problems with the billing system. support Makaka local uh, municipality in the free state with the eradication of the bucket system and open toilet challenges. <laughs> Meanwhile, work is underway to eradicate the bucket system throughout the country. This will also be the priority of the interministerial task team on service delivery that I have established. The team is led by Minister Pravin Gordon. <clears throat> the team comprises the ministers of planning, performance monitoring and evaluation in the presidency, human settlements, water and sanitation, transport, home affairs, public enterprises, energy, rural development, and land reform, health, and basic education. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Chairperson, a key focus area in local government in the next five years will be how we respond to the reality of rapid urbanization in our country. <clears throat> South Africa is becoming an urban country. By 2011, almost 63% of our population were residing in towns and cities, and this trend is expected to continue over the coming decade. Our government's integrated urban development framework will be finalized by 30th July 2014. It will set out a policy framework on how the urban system in South Africa can be reorganized so that cities and towns can become inclusive, resource efficient, and good places to live in over the next 20 to 30 years. Together, 
let us move local government forward. Compatriots, over the past 20 years, we have steadily expanded support for marginalized and vulnerable households from investments in housing, extensions to our social grants programs, and improve access to education and primary health care. Over the period ahead, poverty, poverty reduction will continue to be reinforced. We will continue to invest in education and skills development, as that is the key to economic growth and development. We need engineers, electricians, plumbers, doctors, teachers, and many other professionals to build our country's economy. Education, therefore, remains an apex priority for this government. We will continue to promote universal access to education by ensuring that all children between ages 7 and 15 are in school. We will increase the number of grade 12 learners who can gain entrance to university, moving from 172,000 in 2013 to 250,000 in 2019. We opened at least one new school a week in the Eastern Cape last year. <clears throat> and we'll continue to eradicate mud schools and other inappropriate structures. The number of young people in universities and colleges has increased over the years. Contractors will move on site in September to build the new universities in the Northern Cape and Bumalang. By January next year, the first intake of medical students will be enrolled at the new medical university in Limpopo. <clears throat> in addition, 12 training and vocational education colleges will be built to expand the technical skills mix in the country. <clears throat> Compatriots, together we must continue to fight drugs and substance abuse in our schools and communities. We will also prioritize safety in schools scholar transport, and child health. In the area of health, we will work harder to increase life expectancy at birth from 60 years in 2012 to 63 years in 2019. The campaign to reduce child and maternal mortality ratios will continue. This will require 
the implementation of the national health insurance and the improvement of the quality of care in the public sector. We will build on the successes of our HIV and AIDS treatment and support program by expanding our mass HIV prevention communication campaigns. Compatriots, we will take forward the advances we have made in promoting women's empowerment and development. The minister in the presidency responsible for women, for women's development, Ms. Susan Shabangu, will work with other government departments, agencies, the private sector, and non-governmental organizations to promote women's socioeconomic empowerment, development, and human rights. <clears throat> to further consolidate our democratic gains, we will continue to advance and improve the lives of people with disabilities over the next five years. We will work with the disability sector to identify key areas in which we should fulfill South Africa's role as signatory to the UN Convention on the rights of persons with disabilities and its optional protocols. Another key intervention this term will be to finalize the national disability rights policy, which includes the national disability rights framework. The policy and the framework will guide government action to promote a more inclusive society and to promote the environment <clears throat> of people with disabilities, involvement of people with disabilities in decision-making processes. Fellow South Africans, some progress has been made over the past five years in reducing the levels of serious crime, such as murders, aggravated robberies, crimes against women, children, and other vulnerable groups, but they remain unacceptably high. we will work to further reduce levels of crime. The Special Investigating Unit, the Anti-Corruption Task Team, the Asset Forfeiture Unit, and the, Ho the, 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 the Hawks have made notable progress in our request, in our quest to combat corruption in society broadly and in the public sector. This work will continue in the next five years. <clears throat> Weaknesses in the procurement management and operations systems that undermine the efficiency and effectiveness of government will be addressed. One of the key steps which is already underway is to centralize procurement under the office of the chief procurement officer in the national treasury. <clears throat> we have begun piloting this new approach 
with the centralized procurement of schools furniture in the Eastern Cape. The furniture will be delivered in all Eastern Cape schools by the middle of August 2014. Measures will be taken, measures will be introduced to prevent public servants and public representatives from doing business with the state. <laughs> These will be supported by improved implementation of the financial disclosure framework, strengthened protection of whistleblowers, and the provision of technical assistance to departments for the effective management of discipline. Compatriots, over the next five years, we will continue to promote the building of a better Africa and a more just world. South Africa will continue to support regional and continental processes to respond to and resolve crises, promote peace and security, strengthen regional integration, significantly increase intra-African trade and champion sustainable development in Africa. This will entail supporting and executing decisions of the African Union, as well as the promotion of the work of its structures. We will also continue to promote South Africa cooperation by utilizing membership and engagements with formations and groupings of the South. Similarly, we will continue to promote mutually beneficial relations with countries of the North. We will continue to deepen economic development, trade and investment partnerships with the BRICS through the work of the BRICS contact group for economic and trade issues. Honorable members, honorable guests, the South African National Defense Force has been a source of national pride as it participated in peacekeeping missions in the continent. This role will continue, and government is looking into the resourcing of the SANDF mandate in line with recently concluded defense review. Fellow South Africans, to take this program of action forward, the Deputy President and I will be meeting with ministers and deputy ministers to discuss the detailed implementation plans for each department. Each minister will sign a performance agreement with the President. outlining what each department will do to deliver on the program of action. Compatriots, the 17th of June marks the 22nd anniversary of the horrific Boipatong massacre in Gauteng. Looking back 
at one of the worst horror stories in the recent history, we are reminded of the fact that we need to prioritize healing and nation building more than ever before. We must continue to build understanding, tolerance, and reconciliation, and together fight racism, xenophobia, homophobia, and all related intolerances. The use of sports and culture as a unifying factor in our country will continue during this term. We will also continue to promote the Constitution in schools and ensure that our children grow up with positive values and love for their country and its people. We will continue to build inclusive heritage over the next five years through building monuments and other symbols that honor the heroes and heroines of the struggle that delivered the freedom and democracy we enjoy today. As part of 20 years of freedom and democracy celebrations, records turning 20 years this year, such as those of the late former president Nelson Mandela's first days in office will be transferred to the National Archives. <clears throat> this year, we'll also see the listing of the Codessa multi-party negotiating forum records in the international memory of the World Register. <clears throat> Next month, the country and the world will mark International Mandela Day. All South Africans should dedicate at least 67 minutes of 67 minutes on the 18th of July to clean South Africa. <clears throat> which is our theme for this year. Clean, clean everything. <laughs> Cities, everything. <laughs> Let us begin planning for a major cleanup of our cities, towns, townships, villages, schools, and beautify every part of our country. small steps, just like cleaning in front of your yard next door, <laughs> will help you to do bigger things. <laughs> Fellow South Africans, this program of action is aimed at making South Africa a better place for all. We urge all South Africans to work with us, make the implementation of this program a success. Together, let us move South Africa forward.
Thank you very much indeed. Speaker. We're headed to a short break now, but we'll be unpacking the key issues from the address straight after this. Remember that we would like to hear your views. The number to dial is 011-384-0598, or you can tweet us, that's at CNBC Africa, and using the hashtag Sona24.